The playing field is remarkable. Wow, what a bite. The Potomac River is American history. <laughs> Cleaned up over the last 40 years and reborn as a remarkable bass fishery. Do you see that? And today, what a place to test the world's best anglers. Ah! It's the 10th stop of the season for the Sitgo Bassmaster Elite. Yes! Time to suck it up. Good. To bear down a little harder. Yeah! To make your season. Yeah! We're down to the final 12 fishermen on championship day with less than five pounds separating them all. They are. No one's out of it. Everyone's got a shot. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Today, yes. you show what you're made of. Yeah! You're gonna be a nervous wreck watching this way in. The Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series. Capital Clash is presented by Bush Beer. The Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series. Why do we call it the Capital Clash? We'll take a look at the playing field right here. So much of American history, as we say, came up right here on the Potomac River. Charles County, Maryland, just a few minutes down from our nation's capital. What a place, what a playing field to test the best of the best anglers in the world. This is the 10th of our 11 regular season events on the Elite Series. Man, oh man, if you haven't liked your season so far, this is the time to bear down. This is the time to reach down and get it. Try to make a little money. Try to make it into the classic. Try to make it into the next major. There's so much going on here today. So many storylines as we're down to 12 anglers on our final day. A big day coming up. Tommy Sanders here with Mark Zona. The Bassmasters have been here every single year since 1989. Why do they like it so much? Well, it's a fish factory, you know, but but more than that, you know, we talk about the, all the money on the line, the points race is going on. This expanded schedule teaches us how to catch more bass. And this place right now, we are in the dog days of the summer. It's going to teach us how to catch them. We're seeing more versatility from our Definitely. anglers this year, and that's what this season is all about. Okay, we got a big race on the line. Sitgo Angler of the Year race two. In fact, the top two of our contenders are in this field of 12 today. Definitely. Mike Iaconelli, he's commanded it all year. But the guy I want to talk about right now is Steve Kennedy. The guy has been a bull. He's kind of like the Detroit Tigers of professional fishing. You're waiting for him to slip a little, and it seems like he's getting better right now. All right. Talk about the Potomac again. We mentioned all the history here. A different situation for the first time this year. We have tidal fishing. Right. I'm going to explain this. I'm going to break it down real quick. The best way to describe the tide is high tide in the morning, lots of places for the fish to, to hide. Low tide later in the day can find areas where they go. All right. We'll keep that in mind. The rules of the game. we got 12 anglers on this final day. Eight hours to fish. Your top weight over four days is going to win the $100,000 of five fish limit each and every day. After three days of angling, well, our leader, a man from the Tidewater area down in Virginia, Rick Morris. It's RPM, Rick Morris. All right, let's get it done. We got a 35 minute run. We're going to start out with some top water up in the pads. We're going to follow the tide out and change some baits. And to get in an area, we're going to milk it and have some fun. Well, you heard the plan from our leader, Rick Morris. Rick Morris has been solid throughout this tournament, over 13 pounds each day, and a 33-mile run down the Potomac downstream to Nanjamoy Creek. Let's see what exactly he's got going on here. Oh, what's going on with his hair? I mean, he's got, you know, it's kind of like a Byron Velvet, Leif Garrett looking let's thing. Tell you what, let's let's mean, start with nice. some of that fishing Pretty stuff. Sweet. Fishing oh, stuff, okay. too. Oh, what's he got going out there? Well, what, what he's doing is you, you'll remember all the way back to the classic. Now, what you're going to say, what does that have to do with this tournament? The stuff he's fishing literally looks the same. Rick Morris had one of his best tournaments in a long time at the 2006 Classic. Finished second place fishing all the way down the Kissimmee River, down below everyone else. But it's what he was fishing. He was fishing a chatterbait, okay? Kind of like a little jig with a lip on it, throwing up against the bank, getting the fish to ambush. In this tournament, he's doing the same thing, but today he's going to start out with a topwater bait. Rick Morris, 44 years old, still looking for his first win with the Bassmasters. Had a tough season so far. This is only his second cut out of 10 events. And Tommy, you're going to notice a lot of our guys in the top 12 starting the day out with a top water bait. The reason why we're on a high tide, a lot of water, the fish tend to get roaming. But the biggest key for Rick right now is to land all of his bites. Got some good ones yesterday. Day three in this tournament, his best weight by far of 1610.
There's the start. You like that delayed reaction? You don't do that, you don't get them. Was that exciting or what? <sighs> oh, that was a sweet explosion. If he could get four more of those kind of explosions, game over in the first hour. All right, can he keep the delayed reaction working? That's what's putting the buzz bait fish in the boat. Certainly works for Rick Morris. Puts him up to a bigger lead now, two pounds ahead of Mike Iaconelli. But Mike Iaconelli is a name you cannot get out of your mind. Our, our leader so far in the Cinco Angler of the Year race is going to do everything he can to run down Rick Morris, keep everyone else at bay. So we got that on the way, what he's doing here on the Potomac, that and much, much more. So many guys with a shot at it. Kennedy, Jordan, 12 guys who are really not that far out of the leap. It's anyone's race. The Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series Capital Clash is presented by Bush Beer and brought to you by Sitco, Lawrence, Mercury Marine, and Motor Guide. Welcome back to the Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series Capital Clash, presented by Bush Beer on the historic Potomac River here in Charles County, Maryland, just a few miles downstream from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Final day of competition, championship day. Only 12 anglers left in this thing. They're shooting for $100,000. That's the first prize. The angler brings in the best four-day limit. Only five fish limit per day, though. That's what they're out there working on right now. And this man, Mike Iaconelli, started the day in second place, only a few ounces back. Now his deficit is about two pounds, but don't count him out yet. Well, the, the bigger thing Mike's got going here, he has a lot of history on this lake, Tommy. And he's been vocal about it. He is real nervous about the Angler of the Year points right now, but he's straight as an arrow on the Potomac River. He said the biggest key is finding the bait. If you find the bait, you find the bass. As the day goes on, my bite's gonna get better. What I need to happen to catch these real big fish is I need for that mud from the main river to get sucked in on incoming tide. As that mud comes in, not only does it bring in dirty water where the bass can ambush, but it brings in the shad, and that's their food source. So as that water comes in, it sucks the bait in with it, and that's really, really what I need to happen at this point. So see what happens. Here you, you follow Mother Nature and you wait for the tide and, and that, that makes it interesting because you could actually rhythm the fish a lot better on a tidal place. But when I see shad jumping like this, it gives me good feelings, man. So that's their food source coming in. There's a big one. There's a big one. And here's what we're going to talk about right here is you'll notice there's no grass floating right there, oh, Tommy. Giant. We're oh. on high tide, a lot of water in the area. Later in the day, you're going to notice a lot of grass emerging. The water's yeah. going to get sucked out. Start making the mats. My three pounder. Right on time. The mud comes in, the bass ambush. The bass are eating big shad. And there's a big shad, brother. And there's your bass eating it. Oh, 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 oh. No, no. All right, enough of that. Rick Morris with the first keeper of the day. Gets a little bit of traction on Ike and Ellie, and Ike fires back with that good keeper right there. And right now at 45.08, he is tied for the lead with Morris. And the man chasing him, trying to run him down. Third place, well, it's Steve Kennedy, the man who's right behind Ike and Ellie in the Angler of the Year race. The first day I caught him on a, a ribbit and a horny toad, swimming it over the top of the grass out here. And I weighed in a 415, but I had three four pound class fish that I missed. First one straightened my hook out. I was in there really long. I get it, get it right there. <laughs> Oh, wow. You see, Tommy, it's almost like a lot of these guys right now are waiting for that low tide. They're kind of buying time right now, fishing the outside of this grass, throwing topwater baits that's real usual on the Potomac River. You know, catching a bunch of rodeo payasos. Ro oh, 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 rodeo clowns. Exactly. Steve Kennedy, man, oh, man, has he shown us he has what it takes during this 2006 season. Nine out of ten cuts with the Elite Series, and he has made the top 12 in four of those tournaments. That is a remarkable record. Kelly Jordan, Mineola, Texas. That means he's from Lake right. Fork. He knows how to fish grass. He knows how to fish for big bass. The biggest thing is we talk about guys being comfortable, the style they're fishing. Trust me, 
Kelly would be fishing grass if he was not even getting a bite. But the biggest thing to watch is his later day bite. Got him. Sweet. He's not a four pounder, but we'll take him. I thought yesterday was a tough day. This is not a good indicator. But it ought to stick them in the mats if they're not going to be out roaming around. So that can be good as well because I caught some of my biggest fish flipping mats and I love to do that. That's my favorite way to catch fish. And Tommy, Kelly Jordan made it real clear. You better watch out for me later in the day. He needs two things. He needs that falling water. He needs the tide going out. But the biggest key to his success is that sun. He said, if it gets sunny, all of my big ones are going to flood to those mats. Well, things aren't exactly going bad for Kelly Jordan right now. That good keeper right there. And he's the man who surges into the lead. A half a pound ahead of Mike Iaconelli and Rick Morris. Just a pound ahead of Steve Kennedy. We started out the day with 12 guys within five pounds of each other. We haven't spread the field out a whole lot since then. That means some great competition on the way. Don't you dare leave us. When we come back, we're going to see plenty of success. But don't worry, there will be plenty of failure as well. Someone's going to have to take a fall, and someone will take a fall. Who's that going to be? We'll yes. find out when we get back. For 14 weeks, fans all across the country have voted in the Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series Hottest Rig Running Contest. The anglers have done a bang-up job with the wrapping or graphic designs on their boats, and guess what? We got the winners for you right here. Fourth place in the voting, Mike... Third was Charlie Hartley. Ray Sedgwick's rig came in second. First place was the legend himself, Rick Flunn. And the grand prize goes to Mike Reynolds. The theme was, these colors don't run, a tribute to the armed forces, and Mike Reynolds wins the $10,000 grand prize. Congratulations, guys. Of the hottest rig running contest, ladies and gentlemen. The Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series Potomac River Capital Clash presented by Bush Beer. The final day of competition. We've been at it for four days and we're down to 12 anglers on this final day, each shooting for the $100,000 top prize. Best four day wait over those four days is going to win that top prize. The man who started out with the lead on this final day, Rick Morris, Virginia Beach, Virginia, has been overtaken by Kelly Jordan. Morris is now tied with Mike Iaconelli for second place. Morris trying to get a little of that ground back. Going with that uh, top water lure, that buzz bait on top of the water before the sun gets higher, and he goes to fishing under these mats. And like he said earlier, you got to have a delayed reaction if you want to have success catching them this way. That was a missed fish. It was my fault. Now, Tommy, every single Elite Series event we've seen this year, the winner at the end of the final day that has fished perfectly. Lost no fish, never lost a big fish. Rick is kind of starting to come unglued right now. And I'll tell you something, if he doesn't pick up the slack right now, game over. Oh, God! Oh. oh, I saw him, he was three and a half pounds. Well, the tide's getting right and I'm losing fish. It's not going as planned. All we can do is stick with it. Wait for this tide to come down some and hope the breeze picks up a little bit because there's no clouds. Not looking good, but we're gonna hang in there to the end. Oh, how about those gloves, Tommy? Hey, we gotta explain those. I, I hope we can. Steve <laughs> Kennedy now, the man who's trying to chase Mike Iaconelli for the Sitco Angler of the Year prize, came into this tournament 50 points behind Iaconelli, but much to Kennedy's chagrin, Iaconelli's in the top 12 with him again this week. It's Still, easy to grin. You can't take anything away from Steve Kennedy, that's for sure. And he may be, as we see here, the first guy to start fishing those mats. Oh, there's just a perfect little hole there. I'm sitting down there in it. That's really what you're trying to find over there, just a big cave like that. They'll be sitting in it. And when the tide's out, it's all packed in on top of each other. Not a lot of openings. Tommy, let, let me kind of dial you in what's going on here. Days one through three, I got out on the river, I was looking around, I followed the guys a lot, and it's amazing to watch how heavy of grass they were fishing. We look at Kelly Jordan right here. It literally looks like a green on a golf runway, Tommy, literally, okay? And, and what they would say to me is, Zona, the heavier the grass, the better it was. They were not looking for edges of it. They wanted the thickest cover they could find. 
Now, this is normally the stuff that the average fisherman would pull up on and say, no way I'm exactly. not a fish. I'll be hung up for the rest of the day, right? They said they needed the great big weights to just punch right through there, and then they would play yo-yo. I'm sitting here flipping really heavy mats, trying to catch some really big fish. And I'm catching little ones. But hey, that was number five. Number five. I gotta wait for the tide to get right. Now where I've been catching my biggest ones, it's not right. It wasn't right to the last hour yesterday. And I'll probably spend the last hour there today, but I don't have a real good feeling. I think it's not gonna work. But it's gonna happen late and the tide's 50 minutes later every day, so you keep losing it, losing it, losing it. So I don't even know if I have a chance to get them. The tide has to go on up to make the grass mat out and then that puts them right where you can catch them. Before that, they just can kind of be anywhere and you can't pinpoint them. There's so much grass that's needle in the haystack and they don't really set up to bite flipping the, flipping the mats right. But at low tide, it's on like Donkey Kong. We're just not gonna get, I think it's gonna be six o'clock this evening down there. <laughs> and we got to weigh in at 250, so you see my problem. But there's always a chance. Time management, tide management, and flipping that very, very thick vegetation. Those are three themes that we're gonna get into in great detail as this thing goes on today. So right now, let's get from Kelly Jordan to our first look at Skeet Reese, the California angler. 35 years old from Auburn, California, been to seven classics. He's got two wins with the Bassmaster, but the last one was quite some time ago, back in 2003 at the Harris Chain of Lakes. Now, now Skeet is doing textbook Potomac River stuff right here, okay? The weird thing about the Potomac River is you can go down a bank and look at an area and go, wow, there should be a bass everywhere, never get a bite. But once that tide starts moving, once you see, see that current, like it, you can like put 20 it. pounds in the boat in one minute. So you're saying the tide is really what stacks fish up in certain places. Right there, when you see that current ripping through, that's what turns them on. Yes. They ain't giants, but they're fish. I've caught three or so fish off this exact spot. There's definitely a little sweet spot to it, but oh, that feels good. Skeet Reese trying to make a comeback happen. He almost shot himself out of this thing yesterday. Day three of the tournament didn't even get a full limit of fish to the weigh-in stand. Yeah. Meantime, Mike Iaconelli just getting warmed up. Kelly Jordan, can you get this big one in the boat? And what does Steve Reese have on the end of his line? The answers to all these questions when we return, don't go anywhere. The Sitgo Bassmaster Elite Series Capital Clash presented by Bush Beer. Action taking place on the Potomac. It's the final day, championship day. 12 anglers out there, Kelly Jordan, the man with the lead. But the man who brings home the Pure Later Big Bass Award, Grant Goldbeck of Gaithersburg, Maryland, five pounds and 15 ounces. Our Pure Later Big Bass winner. And in the Pure Later boat right there, we're taking a look at Greg Hackney, one of our 12 anglers out there, still very tightly bunched. Anyone can get back into this thing, but Hackney hasn't got anything going just yet. Well, it's nice to have our friend Greg Hackney in the top 12, especially Tommy, when he's on your fantasy team. Now, oh, this oh, may oh. surprise you, my friend. This is the first time he's made a final day cut since May, all the way back to the first major on Eagle Mountain Lake. How about Jeremy Starks, neighboring West Virginia is where Jeremy comes from, a rookie from Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series this year. Made his first top 12. He's made five of 10 of the cuts on this Elite Series. Not bad for a rookie, the boy from West Virginia. And how about Missouri's Brian Snowden? Brian had the biggest bag of days one through three, 19 pounds, 14 ounces. This man right here, Sanders, is still a threat to win this event. Boy, again, a tightly bunched field. Anyone still a threat? Brian Snowden still got a tournament coming up from his home lake, Lake Table Rock, down there in southwest Missouri. Now, back out onto the lake, Mike Iaconelli. Mike Iaconelli is certainly the object of a lot of attention for the fact that he is the leader in our Sitco Angler of the Year points, the points awarded for the most consistent performance throughout the year. It's such, a, it's such an important title and something I've been thinking about my whole life. I've come close. I've, I've had several top tens and uh, it's something I'd love to do. You know, the thing about it is if it doesn't happen this year, I'm, I'm gonna do it eventually. You know, I'm gonna keep working until I do it. And uh, so it comes in your mind, but what I've tried to force myself to do is, is fish the moment, fish the day, fish what the fish are telling you for that day, and 
not try to think about September yet. It's such a long season. So I'm almost trying to just take one tournament at a time, one day at a time, you know. And let me give a little bit of our hardcore fans some love right now. I asked Mike, I said, Mike, can you explain the year you're having out on the water? He said, Zona, I am not letting practice dictate my plan in the tournament. I literally will change with the lake during the event. Well, that fish right there, a couple of pounds. That adds to his total there, but still Mike Iaconelli stuck in third place. The man in second place, Steve Kennedy. Steve Kennedy, who's currently second in the Sicko Angler of the Year race. Another race Steve Kennedy is just about wrapped up is that Toyota Rookie of the Year race <laughs> over 400 points past his nearest pursuer. He's going he's gonna to wrap that thing up and take Rookie of the Year for 2006. He made four cuts this year on the bass side. Never had a bad day in three of them. Only one I had a decent day was at Gunnersville. Oh my goodness. I jerked, it. I jerked it out of the mat and it just stopped in that hole. I was just reeling in. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> jerked it out of the mat and it landed in that hole right there that I'd already fished. And he bit it before I could reel up to it and get it back out of there. I'd just been hung up. <laughs> you wonder how many are down in there that don't bite. Ha, ah, it takes a little <laughs> luck to win angler of the year, doesn't it, Tommy? <laughs> Tommy, I want everybody at home right now to look at Kelly Jordan. You look at him close. The goatee, it's a new look. There's the old Kelly Jordan right there. And it seems right now, my friend, it's bringing him a lot of luck. <laughs> I grew a goatee and I wasn't planning on wearing it. Now I'm on camera with a goatee. I don't ever wear goatees. I never, I've had one a long time ago and I just grew it out just because. I hadn't shaved in like two weeks, so I just shaved around it and it's still on and everybody's like, you can't shave it, man, it's good luck. You're, you're doing good in the tournaments. He's pulling it off, Tommy. He well, really apparently is. he thinks the goatee is an essential part of his equipment, though. Really, you don't have to have the goatee to fish the heavily matted grass, though. But we are going to talk in just a minute here about all this other stuff that he is using here. And it's pretty important stuff, so stick around for that. Stay on there, baby. Real good. Yes. Come here. Come here, sir. Come here. Thought you were done. You're not done yet. Jeez. Get you in the grass. You can't move. Jeez. That's what you need to win this tournament. It's like that right there. Look at that big old mouth on there. Say ah. Uh, yes. It's four and a half pounds at least. Flipping them out of grass is my favorite way to catch bass. It's my favorite way. Top water, you guys can have it. That's fun. A lot of fun, but there's nothing better than flipping a big mat. Especially when you're getting bit and you know you're gonna get another bite. Use them. 65 pound spider wire, flipping stick, big hook. <laughs> it's kind of more a personal close quarters battle and you never know how big the next one's gonna be. That's what keeps you going. You, I mean, it could be a one pounder, it could be a 10 pounder. It's my favorite. There's nothing better, nothing better than flipping matted, matted vegetation. Numero uno in my book. Numero uno, number one. Yes. I'm thinking, Zona, that wherever you're catching big bass like this for these guys is going to be number one mm. at the time. But in this case, it's that milfoil yeah. grass in the Potomac it's, for Kelly Jordan, special stuff. It's a jungle. And more than anything, Kelly's real. He's, he's at home right now. He grew up on Lake Fork, where this is all you do this time of year. And here's the deal right here. you got a little plastic crawdad right here, kind of punching through there. 
But the real key to this is the size of the weight. You're not going out there with a light weight. You've got the best way to describe it. It's like putting a bowling ball in that grass yeah. and then just yo-yoing it. And he's looking for the thickest part of the grass. He even told me that sometimes he's pitching that weight up in the air so he can get the penetration down. Oh, well, you're exactly right, Tommy. You know what? Today we've got an open house party at the Cisco Bass Eye View, as always. Anyone can come. Tommy, you are invited, my friend. Let's go right now. Check this out. Here's what he's doing. He's just going along, like you said, just like a horseshoe up in the air, bloop, trying to get it down in there. And there's little caves down underneath that grass. Kelly did say the best stuff was the real matted, chopped up grass from boat traffic. All right, back out onto the lake, Skeet Reese. He's also flipping. He's using the flipping stick and the equipment like that. But unlike Kelly Jordan, he's up on the bank, more traditional. Tommy, you know what? I'm going to turn the corner here. We just had a tournament. Dave Wolak won. He had a baby. Skeet Reese is doing well. He had a baby. I'm telling you, I'm going to talk to Mrs. Ona. I'm going to have another baby. I think it'll raise my game in the studio. I really do. Wow. I did. Yes. <clears throat> Those are the kinds of bites we need right there. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, Skeet Reese, that was the kind you need. That's the kind you move up to third place with. Skeet Reese on the move. Hey, whoa, whoa, that was a keeper right there. Bring that back. We got a lot more fish catching left to go. Can Skeet Reese climb all the way back to the top? Who is going to break out and make his move? We'll find out when we come back. Yeah! The Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series Capital Clash on the Potomac River, presented by Bush Beer, having a whale of a tournament. Final day here. 12 anglers out there slugging it out. The man on top, Texan Kelly Jordan, for now. Let's take a look at the Toyota Horizon Award for 2006. The award given to the angler who's most improved from his performance back in 2005. And right now, the man in the driver's seat, well, a big name in fishing, Denny Brower. Again, we got 12 anglers out there today. Let's take a look at some of the anglers we haven't visited with so far, including Stephen Browning. Steve Browning. We have not seen Steve all the way back since Sam Rayburn in February, making a big hit this week. Stephen Browning may have made his way, in fact, has made his way to qualify for the Legends, the third major of the year. He wanted to do that. Mike McClellan, another angler from Arkansas, already notched a win so far this year in Grove, Oklahoma, on Grand Lake. And Mike McClellan having a hard time getting things underway today, but McClellan has certainly qualified and made himself a good season already. How about this guy right here, the Ricky Bobby of professional bass fishing, Cheryl Swindlehead. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The G-Man is kind of getting on a little bit of a roll coming near the end of the year. Oh, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> yes! And how about Kevin Short? The first time we've seen Kevin Short during the course of this 2006 season. It's been going a little slow for Kevin so far. He's only made two cuts in the Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series, but the last time he made one was the last tournament, Lake Champlain, and he was 13th place. So he's making up a lot of ground in a short time. Makes the top 12 here, and in making the top 12, something very good for him. He qualifies for the last major of the year, the Bassmaster Legends. He missed the American in Charlotte by only one point. Of course, the Bassmaster Legends being held on the Arkansas River. That is Kevin Short's home water, so he's tickled already. This fish right here is going to put Kevin Short up into the top six. That is a mule right there, son. I'm talking about a mule. Do you see that? How about some love, Ike? Look how thick that fish is. Huge across there. Kevin Short, actually, that fish right there going to put him all the way up into fifth place with 49 and a half pounds. Now back to Mike Iaconelli. Started the day in second place, but he has faded a little bit. Now he's in fourth. I'm probably two miles from downtown DC, you know, the nation's capital, and uh, outstanding bass fishing, you know, and it's all because of the grass. You know, it's. Uh, it's just testament to what, what grass does to a fishery. It just really makes it alive. And Tommy, what Mike Iaconelli said right there was right on the money. If you notice this year, every lake we've gone to with lots of grass, incredible fisheries.
Good call. Well, I, I, was, wow. I was starting to get nervous he might not scream for us today, Tommy. You know what I mean? He calls with that fish. He moves yeah. up the leaderboard another pound, now at 50 pounds and a half. Mike Iaconelli. Over to Steve Kennedy, of course, and, the guy. Oh. oh, the Sitco Angler of the Year race. We got our guys back to back. Let's talk about this right here. Look at all that trash that he's seeing right now. That is because of one reason. The tide is lowering, making those big, thick mats up on the surface. All right, and as you said earlier, that concentrates the fish as well. So stick around. We could be heading into a very productive period here on the Potomac. That's what we're looking for. It's hard to just flip him in. I got what I hated myself in the morning. <laughs> Three and a half, almost four pounder. I'm not sure what he said right there. Uh, Steve me. Kennedy moving closer, <laughs> closer to our leader right now, but still our leader, Kelly Jordan. That's a good one. Meat in that side. <laughs> Little guys live over here. God. Got me again. That right there, what we just looked at is what I was talking about before. You have to have a perfect day to win one of these events. Skeet Reese, since 2003, has 11 top 10 tournaments with no wins. And that win back in 2003, that's the week his first daughter was born. Of course, some more drama this year at Kentucky Lake, his second daughter born. He wanted to win there as well and had to fish on. A lot of drama, maybe too much drama in one year. How about Kelly Jordan? His last win was in 2004. What happened to our leader at the start of the day, Rick Morris? And can Skeet Reese recover from past mistakes and make something big happen in the final hours of this tournament? Stick around. Mm. Yeah! The Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series. This is the 10th of our 11th event season. Man, things are getting down to it, and we are getting down to the final hours of fishing on championship day here on the Potomac River. 12 anglers in this thing. The man with the lead right now, the Texan, Kelly Jordan, lives down on Lake Fork. That is big fish land. He's trying to find a couple more big fish to seal the deal. The man who's behind him in second place, a pound and a half behind him, Steve Kennedy, the man who's pretty much sacked up our Toyota Rookie of the Year standing. Wow, what a bite. Got off the moon. Did you get that? Did you see my line jump? Mm, 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 mm. Not good for Steve Kennedy. Over to Rick Morris. What has happened to this guy today? Right now, we are on the verge of seeing the biggest meltdown of the entire season. There's a big... Don't you come off.
Tommy, when you combine Omen music with black gloves, I'm just going to put my earmuffs on. I'm serious. A little bit of a down moment for our Rick Morris right there, so uh, he's going to have a hard time coming back from that one right there. That was, pretty, that was pretty <laughs> dramatic right there. Back over to Skeet Reese, having his own drama problems today. Had a couple of things go wrong, and as you rightly pointed out, you have to fish just about perfect to win one of these events anymore. Skeet Reese has made five top 12s this year. That in itself remarkable, including that fourth place finish at Kentucky Lake. Final hour of fishing right now. There's something. Where are these moves coming from? <laughs> that was awful. I, I hope he didn't hurt himself. That was pretty exciting right there. An exciting outcome for Skeet Reese with that fish right there. He takes over the lead. He's now a pound ahead of this man. Kelly Jordan still punching those mats. Kelly Jordan said the last hour is the most critical hour of the entire tournament. Look at that, man. Woo! Wow! This one's even bigger than the other one. Look at that. Now let's get my hand that one's bad. Look at that. Yes! Yes! Wow! This is unbelievable. Oh, Say it's unbelievable. Jordan puts that creature in the boat. Advantage Jordan. Now he's got the two and a half pound lead over Skeet Reese. Maybe a cast or two left. Yowza, yowza, yowza. You're catching him. Oh, Skeet Reese feeling just a little bit confident Talking right there. Trash. But was it enough? Unofficially, Skeet Reese is tied up with Kelly Jordan. Remember, Ooh. Skeet Reese last win 2003. Jordan last win 2004. Ooh. And Rick Morris, is he totally out of it yet? They find out real soon. We're about to weigh him in on the Potomac when we come back. You can put it on the boards. Yes! You're going to be a nervous wreck watching this clean.
the Sipco Bassmaster Elite Series. Capital Clash is presented by Bush Beer. And brought to you by Sipco, Triton, Toyota, and Purolator. We are back. We're ready to weigh them in at the Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series Capital Clash presented by Bush Beer here in Charles County, Maryland. Our non-boater champ crowned yesterday, Mike Frazier of Orlando, Florida. 22 pounds, 5 ounces is three-day total. First to the stand, Jeremy Starks of neighboring West Virginia. But less than 10 for Jeremy, he needed more. Stephen Browning from Arkansas, 13 pounds, one ounce. He'll take over the lead for the moment. Kevin Short, also of Arkansas, his first championship of the season, 15 pounds, six ounces and into the hot seat. Gerald Swindle falls short with 13.11. Greg Hackney, surprisingly short, four pounds and 10 ounces. Kevin Short staying in the hot seat. Mike McClellan with 11.3 can't get it done, nor can Brian Snowden with eight pounds, 11 ounces. Steve Kennedy up next, a leader in Rookie of the Year points and within 50 points of Angler of the Year leader, Mike Iaconelli, but 14 pounds and six ounces, won't get it done. Next up, the Angler of the Year leader, Mike Iaconelli, big win already this year at Gunnersville. He needs 17-2 and 11-14, will not get it done for Iaconelli on championship day. Rick Morris, second at the Classic, but that was six months ago and he has struggled since. Could really use the win here on the Potomac. He's got five. 11 pounds, two ounces. Next up, the day two leader, Skeet Reese. 12 and a half pounds for the lead for Skeet Reese. He can hardly stand it. Has a brand new baby girl at home, 12 and a half pounds away. 17 pounds, 14 ounces. Skeet Reese to the top. Maybe of the more than he figured. He plants himself in the hot seat and he goes to Jordan. Caught him big time today as well, but how well? $100,000 on the line, neck and neck out there on the water all day between Reese and this man, Kelly Jordan. Jordan needs 17 pounds, 9 ounces for the win. Hey, Skeet, you know what he needs? About 17-something. Yep, 17-9. 17, 17 pounds and 9 ounces away from the lead. 17 pounds, 15 ounces. KJ claims the top spot in the bass fishing food chain. How about it for Kelly Jordan? Went fishing for a five pound bass and got him. Great camaraderie amongst the anglers here and Skeet Reese congratulating Kelly Jordan, 60 pounds and nine ounces. <laughs> Kelly Jordan racking up another $100,000 win. This is win number four in your bass tournament career. How does this one stack up to the other three? This one means a bunch. Uh, I tell you, after struggling so hard last year, you know, we, we're looking forward to making the classic. That's big on the list. Did good enough here. Hey, we'll take a win all day long, bro. This is just fantastic. Well, guess what? You get to hold that thing up one more time. You have locked yourself into the classic with a $100,000 win. How about it, ladies and gentlemen? One more time for Kelly Jordan, your capital class champion. Yes, sir. All hail Kelly Jordan. How about the <laughs> Kelly Jordan? Like the guy who looks under the bottle cap and finds $100,000. How about well, who that? hasn't done that? Well, in yeah, I guess Tommy. that's a good point all right there. In all honesty, that was a great ending. It was like the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat all in about 30 seconds yeah. right there for Skeet Reese. For Skeet Reese and Definitely. Kelly Jordan as well. Kelly thought he had thrown it away. Super stuff here from the Potomac River. Man, what a tournament. We were waiting for this one, and it delivered in a big way. Another thing everybody's waiting for all year long, striving to get into, is the Bush oh, Shootout. Now, yes. who gets into the Bush Shootout. Well, it's $100,000 to the winner. Season ending event. Actually, it's postseason. And of course, the guys who are going to be playing in this are the winner of the Classic, the biggest stringer from there, biggest limit from the Federation Championship, biggest limit from the Open Championship, and the top 10 single day limits from our season, our 11 event season. And we look at the guy on top, Ish Monroe for the super bag from Lake Amistad. And Mike Iaconelli there in 10th place, right? 22 pounds, one ounce. That's pretty much I'm, wrapped up. Don't I'm going to go out on a limb and say our field for the Bush Shootout is pretty much set right now. Definitely. Fantasy yeah, fishing, that's, that's I, th cool I think our field is probably pretty much set. I mean, well, our, our well, final well, outcome, let's maybe. Let's talk about this. We've got a great Angler of the Year race going right now. And, well, in fantasy fishing, Bassmaster.com, pick your best. Tommy, we got a race heating up right here. We love Jerry McInnes. We don't like the man. We love him. That's right. But he has slid a little bit. But 
We have one heating up, my friend. Yeah, that's yeah, all a, I'm saying. You had a Tommy Sanders on top by a multiple it. hundred points, but now less than 150 points back, a Mark Zona. So it's going to come down to our final couple of events. I'm in of vulture the year. position You're right in vulture now. Position. Fred. Let's talk about the next event of the yeah. season, the Legends, the third major of the year from the Arkansas River. You know what? We have, like, I'm going to say uh, three quarters of the field right now is local guys. I mean, literally guys from Arkansas. This could be dominated by the guys with knowledge of this river. And we come down to Table Rock, the last regular season elite event of the year. Our Angler of the Year race will be decided there. You've been great this year. Give me your pick right now. For Angler of the Year? Yes. I'm going to say Mike Iconelli. You've stayed there all year. You know what? Something's going to happen. Somebody's going to sneak up on them. That's all I'm saying. Stay tuned. The legend's coming up next time we see you on the Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail. Looking forward to that. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to Bassmaster.com. Yeah. Look at that one.